Blessings to everybody, blessings to everybody. You know, come on in here, come on in. Greet one another. Amazing, amazing. This has been a phenomenal, blessed Sabbath this day we've been having. And right now, we are back with it. Thank you for joining us in the premiere of the Empower Hour program. And right now, I have a very special guest. You know, one of my dear brothers from, oh my gosh, this brother over here. There's no words to describe how, how blessed I feel to just be right next to this brother over here. You know, he says he's High Park's most handsome, but I'm trying to figure out, like, when, when they had this competition, why wasn't, you know, some of the us wasn't invited. But, hey, bless us one time. Who are you? Who are you? I know I got you shaking and stirred, but who are you right there? Bless us one time. Yo, man. Well, as, as far as the most handsome guy, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know, but... But I do know that I'm, I'm very blessed to be here, Brother Chris. It's, it's such an honor, um, and uh, I just give God the praise. I give God the praise to be a part of this wonderful family, to, to be a part of this wonderful church, um, and to be able to minister, more importantly, uh, in fellowship with uh, the people that I've come to, um, come in contact with here for, how long has it been? About maybe, going on maybe 10 years now, I think. Oh, okay, that's what's um, up. So um, it, it's, it's been a while. My, my wife and I are very, very uh, happy to be here. We're blessed. Um, and also with the addition of uh, our dear daughter Jasmine as well, too. So that's, that's a huge plus. Um, but yeah, but I, you know, it's, it's very good to be here. It's good to be a part of this wonderful family. And if, um, yeah, I, 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 I can't say enough about this church. I really can't. I really can't. Right. And then, you know, when I, when I came up with what I need to have for the first episode, man, you brought up to me because you were talking about photography. Mm -hmm. You know, you was talking about photography so mm -hmm. much that I was like, man, this guy thinks of it like it's an art. Absolutely. So how, how beautiful is it that we were having this first Empower Hour episode mm -hmm. based on the art of photography? That's what Brother Cadet has just instilled in us. So we're going to get into it. Mm -hmm. You know, are you ready, Brother Cadet? Are I you am. ready to bless us, the young people, with this information? I am. I there might be some... You know, young people endeavoring to be a photographer. There might be somebody out here who, you know, who want to get into the steps into it, mm -hmm. and you here with us. So, without further ado, what, I think we better off start this off with Genesis. Let's go in the beginning. How, mm -hmm. What made you even want to pursue photography to begin to begin with? Wow, good question. Um, well, the thing is, growing up, um, you know, um, I'll be honest. There was, you know, of course, you know, when, when you were a kid, you're always trying to discover yourself. Right. Sometimes a lot of young kids discover themselves through the influence of other people, um, whether it be positive or negative. Um, I, well, growing up in Boston, I grew up in Dorchester, um, so it wasn't as bad as it is right now, but still a rough neighborhood where you're challenged. Right. Um, but growing up, uh, you know, a, a lot of kids uh, used to tease me in school. Um, I was picked on a lot. Um, I was told I wouldn't be nothing. I was told I couldn't do anything right. I was told. Uh, you know, that I couldn't be committed to anybody. So, mm -hmm. um, of course, as a kid, your feelings was hurt. You was hurt. Um, but suddenly I found myself um, wanting to learn a lot of things. And when I grew up in Temple Salem Church, um, to me, that was my outlet. Because, um, uh, you know, I was surrounded by a plethora of uh, various uh, activities, um, music in particular, and photography. Um, there was a lot of guys, well, one guy in particular, that photographed a lot of my church. And um, I was so in tune and just gravitated by his camera equipment and uh, just watched me how to do it. And I said, one day, I want to know how to do that. Um, and then my dad um, bought a camera, which was really cool. Um, I thought it was the biggest thing in the world. Um, and, uh, and, and he would only pull it out for special occasions. Um, you know, um, I, I remember when my mom graduated from college, he photographed that for her. And just as we were kids, um, and anything that was happening at the church, we would photograph that. But he would also put that camera in the closet. And he didn't have to tell me or any one of us, don't touch my camera, guys, or, or else you're going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, and, you know, and I was tempted to touch it, but I know, but I know my dad, and if you catch me, I'm in trouble. So, Bow so flat. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. He, 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 uh, you know, he, he, he was firm with me in particular, you know, with all of us, but, but the good thing about it is it made me love him more, it made me respect him more, and it made me, uh, you know, just say that in the Bible, I always obey your parents, so that, that, was, that was pretty cool. So 
Um, but I can say on the record, I, I never got a beating from touching my dad's camera because I was obedient. So, <laughs> so that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, but also my uncle, his younger brother, um, came from New York one time and surprised me. He said, hey, Junior, I got you a, a, a gift. I said, what? I said, what is it, uncle? He said, I got you a camera. I said, what? And he gave me a Polaroid uh, Instagram camera. When I saw that thing, my eyes just lit up like the moon. You just flooded. I flooded. I flooded. I was like, I can't believe this. You know, and I felt like, okay, now I'm a photographer. Right. You know? and, and as a kid, I took care of it. You know, I said, I don't want to break this. I don't want to lose it. I kept it for a while. Kept it for a while. And my parents saw, you know, okay, you know, he's been a good boy. So I would ask mom with that, hey, can I, you know, just get some money to take about some film? So they would always give me some money to buy the film for it. And I was photographing, you know, like, I don't know, just like maybe my kid, my sister's birthday party or things around the house, family events, and just give them the photo right away because it was an instant film camera. So, um, so that was really cool. So that was definitely one of my uh, issues that got me into, into photography for okay, sure. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that, that genesis for you. So let me bring you another genesis because mm -hmm. we heard your story now. Like I said, there's some p young people who may endeavor to take this course. Mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to someone who want to start out? Like what type of steps should they take if they want to pursue a journey of photography? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. Um, it's kind of hard to answer because there's so many avenues that one person can take and choose um, but the, the first thing is, is, um, is, is have the will to learn, um, but also be patient. Um, right. I mean, when I, in fact, um, w when I came to the church, um, I, I got to say this about my dear brother, um, brother Milton Samuels, who I love dearly. Um, I remember, um, and the great thing about brother Samuels is, is he knows my professor from college, Justin Petty. Um, I went to school for a major with, um, broadcast media technology and video production and I'm still there um, and uh, Brother Milton um, you know popped in the class to greet my professor to, to greet uh, my professor I said oh man that's Brother Milton and he saw me we shook hands then he went back because I believe he, he also teaches um, and, um, and and one day after church um, Brother Milton came to me with a magazine on photography and when I looked at it my eyes was very impressed and intrigued, I said, okay, I got to take a look at this because this may be something that I can add to my repertoire as a videographer. So I said, I'll, I'll look at it. I'll take a look at it. And when I got home, when I opened it, I was hooked. I said, oh man, these digital cameras. I'm like, oh man, I got to get one of these things. Um, and I had, and, but, and one thing, I had, to, I had to be patient. So, um, you know, I was working and man, man but every time I had my check, I said, I, I got to have my wife. I got to help pay some bills. So like, I gotta wait. So one day I said, you know what? I'm gonna just go to a thrift store. So I went to this secondhand store and I saw this old uh, Minolta XG1 film camera, nothing fancy. And I did not want to start on film, but I said, okay, if I want to get into it and practice, I gotta learn something. So I, you know, just 20 bucks, you know, at a thrift store for, for a uh, film camera. And I said, okay, right, let, me, let me learn this. And that's how I got back into it. And then when I uh, got the film developed, when, when I saw the photos, I said, oh, man. I said, okay, I, I got addicted. I got hooked. I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stay with shooting the film along with digital. So that was the beginning. But one thing that I could say as far as if you're going to start, if you have to start, if you have to start shooting the film, um, go for it. Because it's, it's the basis of photography. It's the basic tool. Um, Students now that are going to high school or college will start learning on film because it'll teach you the elements of photography. It'll teach you about the exposures, um, different lighting elements, um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, f-stops um, and aperture and shutter speed and how to get the right exposure. So, um, yeah, yeah, so if you have to start on film, start on film. And also, the cool thing is that film is back. Um, since 2017, that's when I started getting, getting back into it. Um, Film photography just took the world by storm. No one thought it would come back because from 2012 to 2015, it took a break and then it came back. Um, and, uh, and the reason why was because a lot of young people, uh, high school, college students, and even people, uh, enthusiasts, and even professionals said, man, you know what, we got to get back on the film. And then I don't know how it came back, 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the manufacturers like Kodak and Fuji Film just started reemerging with this with the, with the sale of film, and everybody just man, let me let, let me get it. And now it's it's you know, and if you go on Instagram, um, um, there's now maybe close to 20 million uh, film photographers that are shooting film today. Okay, okay, mm -hmm. I like that. Now, also, for those of you watching, feel free to write your comments in this comment section. I mean, write your questions in the comment section. You know, we'll be able to read it at the end, so we, but this brother right here can answer them. Mm -hmm. And also, get the likes up, you know? Get the likes up. The more likes mean the more recommendations. The more people that can show up in the, and subscribe to this channel. Be a blessing. And, but one thing I really caught me, just blew up, up in my, my face was, you got all these beautiful arsenals over here. What what is this <laughs> over here? Uh, yeah, th this is this this is uh yeah this is um this is uh, uh some of my equipment that I use. Um and, and in fact um um I, I I did mention film at the beginning. Um and two of these cameras are film cameras and these okay. are my digital cameras. Um but let me start with this one. Um this is the uh, uh Nikon uh, F six hundred one film camera, which is a uh, digital film camera which shoots uh, all types of film. Um, I got this for only 40 bucks on eBay. 40 you know, bucks, 40 on, bucks eBay. on eBay, guys. Um, you know what, hold on, let me hold them up every time you pass. Okay, yeah, 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 sure, sure. So that's the Nikon F601. Um, oh, and also, um, some people may wonder what brand I shoot. Um, I shoot Nikon for photography. Um, the reason why is because, uh, well, actually, if I could give you a story about that, um, well, well, the thing is, two reasons. Um, Brother Milton got me spoiled, <laughs> you know, because he's a, a Nikon shooter. So, um, so when I when I first started taking, he, he actually gave a course here at the church, and um, he let me borrow one of his cameras. And when I did, I I fell in love. I, I fell in love. <laughs> and, and, and 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 he would always joke with me, "Hey man, I'm falling in love with my camera. You know, I I, I need it back." And I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> you know." Um, so 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 that's one of the reasons. But also the second reason is um. Um, as I was looking for a digital camera, um, um, my wife and I went to uh, the Dominican Republic for our anniversary, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we had to get our pictures taken. And um, and for for a second, I was gonna go uh, and shoot with Canon um, because of the video, um, because I have a Canon video video camera. Um, but when I got to DR uh, and went, went and we had our fam family portraits taken, the photographer had a Nikon. Uh, D600, which I have here, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, and um, that's what prompted me to go back to Nikon. So that's that's the reason why. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so what are those? So what about those cameras over there? So so this one is an, uh, another film camera. Um, um, this is the Nikon N90, which I also got for uh, cheap price on eBay. Um, guys, I'm gonna tell you now. Um, you know, you don't need to spend a lot of money on good equipment. You can find stuff for really really cheap. And uh, you know, and, and save money at the same time. So, um, in fact, my wife um, buys a lot of good stuff, and she told me, "Oh, I, I've only gotten this for only ten bucks." I'm like, "What? Yeah." And and it's like, you know, so so I'm learning from her by getting stuff on sale. So so I, I don't I don't spend a lot of money on my, on my equipment. I all of my stuff are mainly used, but it get, it get in the what's the most the person could spend? What's the most, and what's the least? The most person could spend? Yeah. Okay, if you're, <laughs> well, okay, in, in, in all honesty, um, a lot of high-end wedding photographers spend a lot of money on, on the equipment, and, and it's okay if, if you do, nothing wrong with that, um, but, um, but there's a guy on YouTube who, who I watch a lot, his name is Matt Granger, and he has a, uh, a series called Budget Photography, meaning photography on the budget. Okay. So, um, and he totally impressed me by using old equipment and getting great results. Um, so, so you can buy um, affordable use equipment and still, and still achieve good results. That's what I did, because I'm like, because my wife would kill me, how much is this this camera? What? She'll, <laughs> <laughs> she'll give it the burn and, and have me sleep on the couch for a week. Yeah, so, you spent 1600 on this, or okay. Yeah, yeah, she'll, she'll <laughs> believe me, she'll, she'll give me the burn and it won't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You know, um, so fortunately, um, you know, um, I, I, I didn't, you know, um, blow all of my money away. So, 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 so thank God for that. But, um, but yeah, you know, again, guys, you know, 
good stuff at an affordable price. I'm telling you, you know, and the results, you know, and, and when I got the feedback from these cameras, I'm like, wow, you know, um, this one, both of these, the clarity is so clear, it's, it's like they're digital, but, but, but they were shot on film. So, um, in fact, um, in, in the slideshow, show, there was a photo of my wife and my daughter. We, we actually went apple picking and I had this camera with me. I said, let, let me take a photo of them walking. And, 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 and it was a cloudy day, but, but the results came out really good. So, um, you know, people think you gotta spend a lot of money on equipment. You don't, you know, you don't. Um, you, you can get good equipment and get it for cheap, but as long as it works. Mm -hmm. If it works, then that's all that matters. The, the, uh, the clients are not gonna care about what you spent. Like, like, like when, I, when I shoot weddings and stuff, they don't know that I'm using used equipment. You're smart, but I, I didn't spend a lot of money on stuff. You know, I, 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 I was smart to say, you know what, I'm exactly. gonna budget and put 30 bucks aside to get one piece of equipment, and it works. You're thinking smart, right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and if we can even go down the line, and, and guys, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm, I'm gonna show you what I did. So, th this goes over here, um, you can point it up. This is a uh, Chiron manual macro lens, and that lens, you could use it for small detour shots. That cost me only 10 bucks on eBay. You know, $10 for that little lens, and it works beautifully. You know, and, and, and if you open, and if you open the, the, the front of it, like, and, and you see the, the, you know, one of the things you want to do is, um, yeah, both, both the front and the back, is, is there anything? Yeah, so, um, one of the things when you, when you buy a lens, you want to you wanna look at the, the condition of it. Um, so, the front of it is clean, um, there's, there's no fungus, there's no haze. Um, and what fungus and haze is, is just build up inside of the lens. And it, it happens over time. So if you don't take care of your lenses, that can happen to it. But yeah, this thing is phenomenal. You know, it's phenomenal. And uh, it, it gets the job done. Not that heavy neither. No, very light, very light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a small light lens and you can put it in the bag and you won't even feel the weight, uh, you won't f uh, feel the weight of it because it's, 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 it's pretty light. Um, this other one, um, here, I'll, you can take the cap off the front of that one. Um, that is, well, 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 the thing is, when, when I first started um, photography, that was the first lens that I bought. That's my most expensive lens, and guess what? That cost me only 70 bucks. You know, I, and I got that from uh, Hunt's camera store, and um, that's what I use probably for uh, a lot of my portrait work, uh, for shooting at weddings and uh, 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 pictures of people. Um, um, in fact, um, 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 I used that lens to photograph my wife in the video, uh, the photo where, where, where it was Edison in black and white. I used that lens to take, her, to take that photo of, uh, of her. So yeah, so that's one of my favorite lenses of all time. Um, this next one, um, yeah, that's it right there. Yeah, uh, thank you, that photo right there. Um, that one, again, what? I think I paid 20 for that one. Is it sick? Yeah. It's a Sigma lens. Um, the millimeter of now one is 20 to 80, to 20 to 105 millimeters. And it's super clean, it's, it's super sharp. Another thing about Sigma lenses, um, a lot of pro photographers rave about these things because of the sharpness and the clarity that you can use to get good images from the photos. And, um, you know, and again, you don't gotta break the bank, guys. I'm telling you, you know, 20 bucks, you know, I got that, I got the on eBay for. Um, and the clarity is amazing. It's clear, it's crisp. Um, you know, um, I've, I've, I've used that on, um, on a wedding and the photos came out phenomenal. So it gets the job done, you know, um, um, you know it, it gets the job done, guys. And moving down, here's another old school lens that I bought. Um, for, I, think, I think I paid 15 for that one. This is called, Pro, that's called a Pro Master lens. It's a manual focus lens, so there's, there's no autofocus on it. Um, and again, you know, it, it just gives you great results. It gets the job done. You know, you don't need to, again, you know, you know, spend a lot of money, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and also, Brother Milton, you know, gave me the secret. Don't spend a lot of money on the gear. Get what you can get for cheap, you know. And it works. It works, you know what I mean? And that, that's what I do, you know. I mean, I mean, and the thing is, I don't buy everything, like, like in one day. I mean, I let months go by, you know, and, and I see what I need, you know. So, so in other words, I don't hoard. You know, um, you know, right. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a hoarder, but, but if I need something, I'll look and I research, then I get it. I mean, mm -hmm. I could tell. You said this is the pro. Th th that's called. I could tell because this is the heaviest one out of them all. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually yeah. heavier than the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> as a matter of fact, I, I have um, 
I did a big one with me, but I have another lens, which is a heavy lens. It's, it's made by Vivitar, and it, it's, it's, it's pretty hefty, you know. Um, but yeah, but I, I, I left that one at home, but this is pretty heavy, and but also dependable as well, too. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's all your gear, right? Well, well the thing is, it's all of it, but let, let's, let's talk about, um, oh, here's another one. Um, I got this a long time ago. Um, this is a Tamron 28 to 80 millimeter lens. Um, again, you know, real cheap, affordable, but you know, um, I use that primarily for a lot of wide angle shots um, because it's a 28 millimeter wide angle lens. Um, and it only goes up to 80 millimeters because you see how short it is, so it's not a zoom yeah. lens, but it's, 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 it's what's called a prime lens. And prime lenses are from 28 to 80 millimeters, up to um, 80 millimeters, so, so this is a prime lens. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, another thing about photography that's a very important element is lighting and using the proper flash. Um, so I have two, two with me here. Um, this is called, this is a brand called Newer, and this is uh, a, a Newer uh, 5, NW580 speed light flash, which is used primarily for a digital camera. Um, I use that in the church a lot because of the lighting it gives. Um, it's very powerful, very dependable, and um, it, it gets the job done. And um, you know, that, that cost brand new, 30 bucks, guys. 30 bucks for that, brand new. You know, guys, I'm telling you, man, listen, I'm giving you guys my secrets. Don't spend a lot of money, trust me. You know, you can get stuff for cheap. You know, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And this one is an older one. Um, that's a Nikon SB25 flash. Again, you know, not a lot of money I spent for that. What, 25 bucks for that? So, yeah, you know, it gets the job done. You know, it gets the job done. So, um, you know, uh, um, um, again, you know, you, you don't need to um, um, overspend. Now, um, in fact, earlier, I had a brother ask me about film, and he asked me, well, how do you scan your film to get it digital? Well, I got two rolls of film here, um, made by Kodak, if you could hold those up. Um, you know, again, if you want to st start in film photography, um, Kodak is a phenomenal, in fact, it's the number one brand for photography. They've been around for years. Um, and they also utilize Kodak for uh, motion pictures, motion pictures from, for movies. Um, so a lot of movies that you see nowadays, even, even from back in the 80s, was all shot on Kodak film because of the color and the clarity that you can get. Um, but this is for photography, so you can't make a movie with that. Um, and the other box is uh, Kodak Ektar. Um, it has a very, very clear grain to the film. It has a lot of color, a lot of depth. Um, and it's a professional grade film, and I'm waiting to um, use that on a professional page shoot, so that's why I didn't open that box yet. So. Um, so, so, so I just wanted to show, to, uh, to show you guys. There's also other types of films too. There's Fuji film. Uh, if you want to shoot black and white film, there's a film called um, Ilford. There's also Kodak T Max 400 film for black and white photography as well too. So you could utilize that as well too to help you um, if you want to get black and white results. Right. Okay. I appreciate that. I mean, that's a lot of information that he, this bird right here has given us. Like once again, get the likes up, you know, because it's not every day that we get this type of blessing. You know, this is what Empower is all about, you know, teaching young people how to pursue certain endeavors, you know, because we seeing things are getting tough. So something like photography, man, that could help pay a couple of the bills a little bit. Absolutely, you can. Or and even get real serious and become really professional with it. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and speaking of a uh, professional, um, my last two cameras, um, these are my... Um, Digital DSLR bodies. Um, these are the Titans, right? These, those, those are the Titans. Yeah, the Titans. <laughs> those are the Titans. Yeah. Um, that's the um, that that camera right there is my Nikon D three hundred S. Um, that 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 camera to me um is what um, well, in fact you know this is a story about that camera um. When I first bought my digital camera, I didn't get this one. I got the Nikon D two hundred, and my wife and I we went to Orlando. And she saw my cameras, and she saw the condition of it. It was, it, it was but it was kind of bitter. She was like, oh, honey, why don't you get a nicer one? I said, okay. So I went to, so I had my D200 for a little while. And um, I went to her camera, and a buddy in mine told me, hey, they got the Nikon D200 that's for under, under 300 bucks. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And then I went back a couple of weeks later. He goes, hey, man, they got it for 250 I wait, that's okay. And then, hey, the price went down. And then a, a, a buddy of mine who works on Hunt said, hey, listen, since I know you, I'm gonna lower the price for you even more. I said, okay. 
So I said, well, what, what, I, I, so, I, so I said, well, so Dave, um, I have, a, um, I'm like on D200, can I trade it in? He goes, yeah, just put it in, we'll look at the condition, and then we'll go from there. So I cool, so I brought it in, and he knocked the price down for me, and I was able to walk out with this camera right here, and uh, that's been one of my, you know, uh, just, that, that's, that, that's my go-to right there. You know, um, in church, I use, I, I use it a lot. Um, we know we're not gonna start it, so that camera to me is a blessing and uh, definitely helps a lot to have it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, um, last but not least, oh, another, another thing I wanna talk about is um, um, there's something called sensor sizes, and I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show, you, show you what that is. This camera in, is called a crop sensor camera, um, but in Nikon terms, it's a DX format, meaning it has a smaller sensor. This one, um, is a uh, Nikon D600. This is a, 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 a full frame camera. And what full frame is, and also um, I gotta give a shout out to Brother Man and Samuels because he um, you know, um, put me onto that one. Um, and uh, this one, um, um, in fact, when we went to the DR, um, the photographer that shot us shot us on the same exact model. And when I saw it, I said, you know what, I, 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 that's what made me want to go back to Nikon because because of that camera, but that one um, so meaningful because um, I, I can never forget how I felt when I saw that we were getting photographed, my wife and I, with that particular camera. So a lot of meaning to me with that one. Um, but 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 also another thing I want to talk about is um, there's a sensor inside the camera. This one is smaller. This one is bigger. And what full frame is, it's actually equivalent to 35 millimeter film. Um, so it has the same sensor size as these cameras as these cameras have inside of it. So it's bigger, um, and, 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 and what I mean by that is, is it, it lets in more light, also what's called dynamic range, which is, which is what helps you with, with, with better exposure. And, um, and also, you, you can put more in the frame because it's, it has a bigger sensor. Um, this one, not too much, but this one, what's cool about this, the smaller sensor is that when you put a full frame lens on it, like these are all full frame lenses, you're able to pull in the, the, uh, the subject even more because it, it magnifies the subject. So it's like a magnifying glass, so to speak, if you will. So, so there are a lot of cool elements that, uh, that photography can bring, you know, when you use different type of cameras. Right. And you know, you brought his name up quite a few times during this interview, so I think it'll be very appropriate that we speak on this much. Mm -hmm. So from what I've been hearing, there's a certain ministry that's mm -hmm. starting to come up, yes. uh, starting to brew. Yes. So why don't you let all of us that's watching, all of us that's listening, mm -hmm. what ministry is about to start launching soon? Uh, the Ministry of Photography, and, um, and Brother Milton um, actually gave me a call and sent me a text, um, and when I responded, I, I was over the moon. I mm -hmm. was so happy, um, because um, for, for me, I, you know, with what I do, I give God the praise first and foremost, because he gave me this gift. And I'm a firm believer in if you have a gift, you got to give it to God. Yeah, because the Bible talks about um, giving talents and giving gifts. The Lord gave me this gift. And, right. um, and, 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 I'm, and I'm a firm believer. When I look, behind, look through my camera lenses, I want God's glory to show. Um, I don't photograph anything. I don't photograph things that are inappropriate or things that don't portray God's name. So it's important that God's name is glorified and, 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 and uplifted through this ministry. Um, but the ministry of photography is, I, I don't want to see it only as photography. I want to see it as a chance to give the church an extra gift, to give the church something uh, extra as far as, as, far as, as, far as um, being a minister and, and, and ministering uh, because um, one of the things that, that I really is, I want to inspire to do is encourage a lot of people. Um, I also work for a live church school photography, and I love sharing the story. One day I was photographing a student, and uh, she came in, and she was very depressed. She was sad. She was just going through a lot. I said, my friend, you know, how, how, how can I help you feel better? She goes, I oh, just, just take my picture, and then I, I said, okay, listen, well, how about we do this? How about we try a couple of poses, and we'll go from there? Mm -hmm. She said, okay. So she, felt at ease, so she felt she could trust me, and the first three shots, when she saw them, she, her face lit up. 
And that motivated me to even go deeper in, in, in photographing her. So I changed the background, changed the lighting, and did a lot of things at her photos. You know, and, and, and she came to school just wearing a, a, a regular shirt and a t-shirt and nothing, nothing more. But to God's praise, um, I don't know how I did it, but she she looked and felt different after after seeing her photos. And um, I just used the gift that God gave me and, and was able to help somebody feel better that day because photography can be a upliftment. Um, you know, uh, you know, the church is a place where you have a whole lot of people. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know where they came from. And they come in for a sense of refuge. And if I can use this gift to uplift somebody, to make somebody smile, um, and to give them that picture and, and they say, hey, you know, this brother took a photo of me today. It, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And, um, and, 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 and the thing is, Brother Milton, um, utilizes his gift in the same light. Um, I, I went to his house and he showed me some photographs and I, I was a jeweler and I was like, man, I was like, ah. You know, photos of landscapes and trees and people that he took of his family and, 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 all, and of course what he said here at the church um, inspires a lot of us young people like myself to, to want to just carry on the torch and, and to keep the fire burning because here at High Park, there's so much dynamic here. There's so mm -hmm. much... Um, there's so much diversity, there's so much love, there's so much respect for each other. So why not take this gift and elevate it? You know, it's not just having this equipment just to show it off. No, I, I want to give God the praise with what I have here. Right. So, so when he told me about it, I said, man. And, um, and I have some ideas that I want to share with him. And, and, and of course, him being in charge here told me what's doing. And I'll just be obedient and humble and say, hey, you know, let, let's, go, let's go this way and then, um, yeah, and and I just and I just work with him. I mean, someone's already taken notes. I just see in the comment sense, comment section, someone just said, "Thank you, Lord, for High Park Church." You know, this person just saw what you just had to say, and then they just had to shout, "Thank you, Lord." So, how you feel about that, Burke? That praise God. It, 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 you know what? It's not about me. It, it, it's about God Almighty, first and foremost. And and to to for someone to uh, look at what we're doing in this ministry. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 you know, and to know that we can have an impact on this church is a blessing. And, and another thing I want to say, um, I know COVID and the pandemic had a lot of people mentally shut down. And, that's right. And things of that sort. And, yeah. and, and I said to myself, man, God, what can, what can I do? You know, and I know a lot of people ask that question, man, you know, you know, but now things are coming back, people are coming back, and we're, we're getting back into a close to normal phase, if you will. We got to full advantage of ministering with whatever gift that we have. Um, in fact, I was listening to this minister last night and uh, this evangelist, he said, the time is now for us to minister. Right. You know, I, I, I don't know we hear about the last days and prophecy and things like that, yeah, but, but, but God said to us, pursue my, my word, you know, pursue my, 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 my blessing upon the people, you know, bless people, tell people about me, and teach others, you know, I'm edified, you know, I'm, I'm you know, glorify God, you know, because if you do that, God, God is going to make you feel like there's no pandemic. Mm -hmm. God is, is going to make you feel like there's no war with um, Ukraine and Russia. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're happening, yeah, but the Bible said this is what happened. But God said, my people will be protected. I'm going to, I'm, I'm still going to secure, right. I'm still going to walk you through the valley. That's right. So, and for me, that, can, that, can, that gives me comfort because at first, when the pandemic started, I was scared. I can't lie. I was terrified. Yeah, you know? I know. I mean, I was like, man, can you go to church? Who would have like, thought? Who would have knew? Who would have thought? Who would have knew? Yeah. Yeah. But also, who, who would have thought that I would be here, that we, would, that we would be here today? Right. You know? So it's a blessing that we got through 2022, and now we got to go stronger in 2023. So when Brother Mayor told me, told me about the ministry, I said, there's no way I'm going to say no. I, I was excited. I mean, I've always started photographing here and, and mm -hmm. doing things with the church, and, and I'm so happy and blessed to do it. And I did it to learn from him and to learn from, you know, just how to get better at it. Because, you know, I wanted to start from a foundational standpoint how to become a photographer um, because I love it so much and, 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 and it's a passion for me. But I wanted to make it a professional career. And being with Brother Milton, 
it helped me a lot. And, and, and I will say this, and Brother Moon, if you're watching, I love you, and I yes, appreciate you, bro. Yes, most definitely, Brother Moon. And, and please, and, and Brother Moon will tell you, when I see him, I'm always asking him for advice. You know, I, I never see myself as a, I'm not a master. I'm still learning the craft. Mm -hmm. You know, and, but Brother Milton, with so much experience and so much seasoning in him, um, I'm always asking, hey, you know, how do I do, how do, I do that? Because you, you always want to grow. You know, you never want to stay stagnant. You, know, you, you always want to excel. Right, that's right. You mm -hmm. know, Brother Milton Samuels, you know, that's a phenomenal gentleman right there. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know, and yeah. those of you who that's interested in joining that ministry, mm -hmm. speak with him. He, you know, he's going to let you know how to get that thing set up, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I also want to give you your flowers, you know. Uh -oh. I mean, maybe it's this thing behind <laughs> me that's reminding me, you know, God bless the, the Brown family for this. But yeah, I, I want to give you your flowers because you were just bringing that up. I remember since you said the whole situation with the pandemic, mm -hmm. I remember when the church was closed, right? Mm -hmm. You helped me and Brother Ensign what we was doing, you know? Yeah. That, what was it like 2020 it was around when the churches was still shut down yeah we yeah. was doing our little street campaign going mm -hmm. outside yeah and you blessed us with the photography even for there so you know this brother over here he has tenacity he has wisdom he has strength you know he, he has such willpower that i don't want people to even i mean you could kind of see he already got the physical strength, but he also oh, has that strength underneath, too. This is fat, y'all. This is fat. <laughs> you know, my, my, my wife teases me, oh, hun, you fat. Are you having a baby? <laughs> oh, man. You know, she, she teases me all the time, man. But, uh, but hey, you know what, though? Um, no, I'm humbled by that. Mm -hmm. um, um, I remember that ministry when we uh, went to maybe call it canvassing, if you will, to a lot of people on side, but um, we needed something to do. You know, right. We need something to do. And uh, it, it was so important that we reached out to the community um, because we, 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 couldn't, we cannot lose hope. You know, and so for me to photograph those, in fact, one of them, one of them was in a slideshow. Yeah, a couple of them was in there. Show. And uh, I, I didn't think that, you know, you, you had this. I, I, but I remember that time and uh, just the blessing to be able to be a part of that was, was, was something special. You yep. know, and, uh, uh, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that with you, man. I, I had a lot of fun. That's really cool. A yeah, lot no of fun. doubt, no doubt. I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, man. You. Thank you, man. All right, guys. That concludes the Empower Hour. Before we officially shut down, let me give a, a couple of announcements. You know, yesterday we had our first premiere game talk. If you missed that, why don't you tune back in and catch it on the replay? And also... We also have our logo contest. We just extended it to January 1st. So if you haven't submitted it by now, you can still have time to do so. January 1st is the deadline. And other than that, you know, that will be all. Let's do a quick word of prayer. Why don't you pray for us to close out? Father God in heaven, we thank you so much for your blessing upon the people. Father God, we thank you for the opportunities and the chances that you gave us each and every day, O oh Lord, to be able to minister to tell others about you to praise your different name O oh lord father god this church is in your hands from the pastor to the youngest member lord may we all be under your protection and under your guidance oh lord and that you may be with us and that you may watch over us O oh lord father god we thank you for the sabbath we thank you for now the beginning of a brand new week O oh lord and father god we ask that for the next five to six, to six days that you may be with us so that we may be able to get back next time to praise the name, to, to worship, and to have fellowship with you and one another, oh Lord. Father God, with this blessed brother Chris, who, um, who, who uh, just gave me this interview, be with him and his family, and be with him in his ministry, oh Lord. And Father God, as we depart from here, be with us tonight, and may your peace be amongst all your people. Oh Lord, we, uh, we are asking all of this. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Until the next time, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Blessings.